Welcome back to the studio. Today I'm in the Mediterranean, the beautiful coast of Spain and even on the Atlantic coast of Portugal. Those white washed buildings, the white and cream colored buildings, just glisten in the sun with that. The tile roofs, it, it's just, it's magical. It really is just absolutely wonderful. And so this is a piece I've really been wanting to do for a long, long time, and I just decided now's the time to do it. I love the, the tile roofs, the, like I say, the white buildings, the different colored shutters and, and windows, and just the neat chimneys and everything. So I just decided this is time to do it. I've gone ahead, the background is complete. The building, the buildings in the foreground, I want to be dark so that your eye goes back to the sunlit buildings in the background. And that, that's something that Jack used to call the threshold effect. If you think of a, going outside on a warm summer evening and it's dark out and the, the lights are all in, on in your house and the front door is open, your eye immediately, with that front door open and that bright light, your eye immediately just jumps across all that darkness and to that light. And that's the same, it goes across the threshold of the door and into the light. And so that's, that's the effect I want here. This is all going to be dark so that your eye immediately goes back into the light part of the painting. And that also helps to give depth. So that I've made this, this building here a more creamy color. Uh, it's in shadow, and then this building here is another white building, but again, it's, it's, it's dark in shadow. So now I have painted my roofs, and I'm going to have a magenta vine coming over the, the top of this building. It's a nice, dark, rich color, and I'm using mixtures of magenta plus white, and that's a special color that I use. It's, it's not one that I mix with our double primary palette but it, it's one that we, we purchased. You can just purchase magenta. And so I start, I block in the flowers first. And I'm going to let this vine kind of drape down over the building. This breaks that severe edge coming across here and just helps to add interest. A friend of mine was saying that they had uh, when they were in Spain, they had bought a painting that was the buildings with the rooftops and everything, but they said, goodness gracious, Mickey, you know, I love we looked at it, and we love it, and yet it just doesn't have, doesn't have the Mickey touch, doesn't have all the flowers and bougainvilleas and just beautiful color and everything, and I said, well, that's probably because that's really not there, but... I, I added in. I like, you know, being an artist, you can make the world the way you want it to be. So that's, that's the fun of, of painting. So I, I, may, I paint paintings of something that I'd like to look out my window on, or if it's a terrace, the view I'd like to step out and sit on that terrace and have a cup of coffee or eat my breakfast in the morning. So I, I embellish. I, I, just add all sorts of neat flowers and things. Again, we're artists, we can control what happens on our canvases, so why not make it fun? Well, let's break a couple little flowers up over this. Now in the lower right corner, I'm going to have a bougainvillea, a hot pink bougainvillea. But this is, this is Probably, I'm just trying to think, magenta, this is probably a morning glory vine or some kind of a, a vine, thumbergia or something along that line. But let that vine come down. Now the flowers are blocked in. And I'm painting with a bright brush. This is a square, has a square end. And I don't, you've noticed that I, I use the corner to shape my flowers. I can use the broad, flat side to make bigger brush strokes, or I can use the corner to make smaller ones. So that's magenta plus white. Now I'm using a mixture of viridian green plus white. This just gives me a cool green. 
cool is in color temperature, not cool like, oh boy, that's a cool something or other, I don't know. But um, it's not a slang, it's not an expression, it's, it is actually the color temperature. My window is a color called Severus Green, and that is made by Rembrandt. This tube is pretty, almost gone. But this, this, can, this shows you, I don't know if you can read it or not, but this is another one of those special colors that I use. And uh, great for doors and windows. Particularly, I do a lot of Santa Fe paintings, so this is, this is good for, for those Santa Fe paintings. And I want to put some darks, cool darks, in the depths of my foliage, so I use a mixture of my phthalo blue plus liquid. Just kind of smush some color up there. I'll come back and refine it a little bit. But this kind of gets me some color up there. And I'm even using a few brush strokes of Thalo Blue Plus White. Just bring some of these leaves down. Now I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush because I want my leaves to be heart-shaped on the Thumbergia or the Morning Glories. The leaves are heart-shaped, so I can just make little heart shapes again using that bright brush. This again is a, has a square end. And I can just make, make my leaves heart-shaped. What I like about some of these vines that have the heart-shaped leaves, like sweet potato vines and morning glories, and, is it, it adds a little romance to the painting without, you know, actually putting hearts in there, but it, it adds a nice touch of romance. I'm going to add just a little bit of white to that mixture of, again, my Viridian Green and white. This is going to be a little bit lighter mixture. Even though these are in shadow, I am going to have some little lighter few little lighter strokes in here, just so you can get the shapes of those leaves. And they're just tumbling over this building. Now these up here will catch the light just a little bit, but I don't want to make it too light. Now that one got too big, so I can take some of my roof color, which is my mud, which is two parts of ultramarine blue and one part of alizarin crimson and cadmium orange, and that's the mixtures I've used in my roof. Some of the mixes have a little bit of ultramarine blue in them. Some have a little bit of my phthalo blue in them. I add those at the back of the roof because that adds some coolness and that makes the roof edge go back. Cool colors go back, warm colors come forward. Now I'm going to add some of my little vines in there, the little tendrils coming down and over the, over the roof. This just adds interest. These are fun to add in. And it's, it's always easier to put these in if the paint behind is wet because it, it pulls into that surface easier. Now I got that down a little bit far. I have saved some of my color from my windows. I can just paint over that. And then that little crack between the two window sashes is again, that's my mud. Put that in there. Now I'll go 
go ahead and put this back in. There we go. It's fun to add these little tendrils in there. Now this one I'm going to let these go all the way down here a little bit further. They'll come in front of my geranium, so they'll kind of break down there. Don't want them too prominent, but just to kind of break in front of that geranium. And darker one here. Now I'm going to add a few more little highlights on my flowers. to make my roof back here instead of this little stroke there being the flower. Need that darker. Go ahead and let my roof show there. I'll just have that little bunch of flowers breaking up. I'll have a little leaf here. Ah, no, I'm not. I'm not going to put a leaf right there. I like that roof showing through. That helps give depth. When you have overlapping elements, it's like these flowers are breaking up over that roof. That makes the back edge of the roof go back. So what I'm going to do is have one of my little vines coming up here. That lighter. And then the flower stems will come there. It doesn't have to be real detailed just a little bit of detail. It's amazing how just putting a little bit of detail in there, it looks much more detailed than it actually is. Get tongue twisted here. Let's do a few little lighter leaves in here. Again, you can use a fairly large brush to make some fine brush strokes. I'm going to add a little more white to my um, magenta. I don't want to get those too light, but I just want to add a little bit, make it just a tiny bit lighter. Didn't have any paint out there. Some more white paint on my palette. We have pictures of, gosh, we've taken pictures all through our travels, and so I, I have pictures that, actually the one I'm using for reference was taken in Provence, and it's all creamy color buildings, but I decided I like the configuration of the buildings, so I'm using the, the creamy color buildings to, and making them white, again joy of being an artist. You can, you're the boss of what happens on the canvas. A little more. I want to add some dark in behind that blossom. Now, the centers of the flowers are darker magenta, so I'm using a mixture of magenta plus liquid. And I just take my mall stick, this hooks over the top of my easel, and then I can rest my hand on that. Hope you can see that. I just rest my hand on the, on the mall stick, and that steadies my hand. And then I just add my little centers in the, in the flowers. That gives them definition. Going to add a little this bud breaking up there. And 
And these here are catching the sunlight. Not sure how well that'll be seen. Oops, got too much on my brush. This helps define my individual flowers. You can see that those masses of color are beginning to, to look like actual flowers. Again, I paint the flowers first and the leaves last. I block them in that way because that way my flower color stays nice and pure and pretty. So that's, that's how I paint the, the vine. I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Please visit my blog. I show the complete step-by-step -step process of this painting, along with others that I do. And I know several times people have seen one of my videos and they say, well, we want to see the rest of the painting. And if you will just go to my blog, the link is in the description below, you'll find the rest of the painting there. And you can just follow along and, and, and see it, see the entire process, see the finished painting. And so visit my blog. The link is in the description below. The address is also on the final frame of my video. So you have a wonderful, wonderful day and happy painting.